Welcome to another episode of The Modern Moron. You know, I sit and listen to the opinions coming out of our mouths on these episodes, and I just think, where the hell do either of us think we are coming off with these grand opinions about stuff that neither of us has a clue about? I've never been to Europe. I've never been around the world. I don't know anything. I know nothing about any culture, even in this country. And yet I truly think my analysis is infallible. I mean, for realties. The humility gene literally fell off the senators and my DNA strand. We start our conversation in grand style as the senator inquires about the location of the Oscars a few months ago at Los Angeles's Union Station. From this, the senator works his way to Dr. Anthony Fauci and implies the senior medical advisor to numerous presidents graduated last in his class in medical school. So I take the bait, as I usually do, and get pissed off at him, as if the senator has any room to talk about academic achievements. I found this from a site called Biography.com. I have no reason to doubt it. Dr. Fauci graduated from College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts as a pre-med after graduating first, first in his class from New York City's Cornell Medical College in 1966. He completed his internship and residency at New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center. So basically the exact opposite of what my idiot first partner claimed. Complete opposite, solidifying his seat at the head of the morons table. At least you're number one at something, Senator. Good for you. Again, he set me up for this, and it's my fault for taking the bait, of all people to criticize how another person speaks. uh, Need I say more? Finally, we hit upon a topic that is more our speed, which is an app. I think it's an app or a website. It's called Memo, M-E-M-M-O, two M's, uh, memo.me. You can go there and have celebrities uh, send a video or audio message to a friend or family member. And this site's idea of a celebrity is very broad. I don't know most of them, which is partially due to my age and not being in touch with society. But a good portion is due to what constitutes a celebrity these days, which is not much. So I hope you find something in this episode that is informative, educational, probably not, or entertaining. Thanks for listening. Why are they holding the Oscars in Union Station? What is the purpose of that in in Los Angeles, the train station? My first guess is that um, it's a very old building that has some interesting architecture, does it? It does. Very um, art. That's probably the, that's the only reason I can think of. And and maybe it's got a lot of space to spread everybody out. I don't I don't know. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, is it COVID, you know, more more suited for for uh, I have social distancing? no idea. No idea. Why don't we why don't we email Dr. Fauci and ask him because he's probably knows because he knows oh, everything. God. Uh, oh, really? Do you think he's spouting falsehoods? Are you on that train as well? No, no, not not at all, not at all. I don't. I think they could have picked somebody with, um, maybe they didn't finish last in their class in medical school. But Anthony I, Fauci finished last in his class. I don't know if he finished last. I, Why the f- would you say something like that? You're a moron. That's a total falsehood. Why would you say that? Hmm. Because why would you he, just pull that out of your ass? Because he talks like he finished last in his class. Oh, and you still don't even get it. So you think he sounds like he finished last in his class. So you're going to spout off about that as if it's a truth. Oh my God. (laughs) You're a, you're a dandy. I just, I think we could have had a much better spokesman than Fauci, but whatever. Really? Hasn't he been in that position for a very long time? Eh, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, would you give him a, would you give him an A plus? I'd probably give him a mm, C plus. I, I don't think I'm in a position to hand out grades. Meh, good point. Good point. I, I understand. <laughs> I am. I, I, in that subject, yet I'm mouthing off about everything else under the sun. <laughs> so let's put that, let's put some context on that. Oopsies. I'm so full of <laughs> Do you want to get into at all? Do you want to get into the verdict trial with uh, the officer? Uh... Had a long talk with an attorney about that. Yeah. And my mm-hmm. first question to him was do you think that guy uh what is the the guy's name that that was 
guilty on all counts. Um, Chauvin, Chauvin, Michael Chauvin. God, we are and, so and, ill prepared. And, and I was wrong because a couple of Derek, Derek Chauvin. Yeah, and a couple episodes ago, if you remember, I I had my doubts that he would be. I mean, okay, again for the record, what he did was just beyond. It's it's beyond description. It was so horrible. guilty. So you're thinking guilty. I, 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 I thought because of the drugs in the system of the victim, I thought that was going to be the out. And I was wrong. And I'll admit it. I was absolutely mm-hmm. wrong. I mean, the defense did use that as part of their part of the trial, the defense. But I thought that was going to create doubt. What was the, the fentanyl and pot and whatever else he, the guy had in his system, uh, you know, some other drugs. But I was absolutely wrong. And I'm. I'm 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 kind of glad I was wrong. I mean, I think that was ended up being the right the right decision. And immediately afterwards, apparently, I don't know what department is the Department of Justice, but there's an investigation being made into the is it Minneapolis? That yeah. police department is under a big yeah. federal investigation. Now. Yeah. If I was a um, man who uh, played the stock market, I would start investing in um, private security. Because I th- I believe that most police departments across the country are going to be gutted. You're going to lose you're going to lose police officers. You're going to have recruits who are coming in who are not qualified. And I think the protection of property and lives are going to be diminished. And people are going to have to still pay taxes for you know for for police and fire. But you're not going to get a return at all. And I think private security is going to be it's going to grow huge in my opinion because what about the liability insurance for companies like that yeah well what i mean they want to put the liability down on the cops right not on the city i mean um george floyd's family got 27 million dollars that comes out of you know the general fund taxpayers Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. okay could you imagine if the cop was liable personally well what do you think is going to happen if first of all, they would have. That, never, but it, first of all, no, the old man, they would have never got twenty-seven million dollars because they always, the attorneys always go where the money is, right? Always. And if I'm a cop and I'm in uh, downtown Detroit and that and I and I commit a, a a murder and I'm convicted of it, what am I? What am I? How are they gonna? What are they gonna get from me? My my house, my equity, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, there's no equity in houses in Detroit anyway. So you sue a city. Yeah, you sue it. You always go where the money is. Well, now you'll be suing a private company. Yeah, now you'll be suing a private company. Yeah. But I, I just, I, I see, I see. Well, what do you think their liability insurance is going to be, those oh, companies? God. right It's going to be astronomical. Right up there with the doctors. Right up with Dr. Fauci and all the other medical doctors. It's yeah, malpractice. It's going to be crazy. malpractice. Yes. This security company killed so-and-so, and it's malpractice. That's why we need tort reform. Let's go to tort reform. I, I don't even know what a tort is. <laughs> it's a tart. It's a it's a pop tart. Uh, don't 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 go there. <laughs> Did you you want to talk about Derek Derek Chauvin or not? Uh, I I don't I I I I shouldn't say barely. Of course, I followed the news of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I. Th- yeah, I mean, yeah. How, how, what do you want to talk about? I mean, it was horrible. You, you're the one that brought it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I talked to an attorney about it. Okay. Do, let's. I, I asked him, "Do you think that was a fair trial?" He said, "Yes." Yeah. I thought it was a fair trial. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you've got it on video, Ugh. that's pretty. That's pretty incriminating. And you have people yelling, saying, "Get off of him." You're killing. You know, can I? I'm glad you brought that up. Can I say this about that? I think that, and this was not. Uh, I don't know how to put this. I think the bystanders that were encouraging and and yelling at Derek Chauvin are partially had something to do with his death. Let me explain. I think a, there are a large faction of police officers that feel you know. I got a badge. I got a gun. I tell in it when I come into a situation, you don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Right. And if a bunch of people are standing around telling a police officer, in particular this one, 
get off his throat, get off his throat. You're killing him. He sta- he had his knee on his neck and he looked at them like, you don't tell me what to do. Exactly. I tell you what to do. Right. And the longer you tell me to get off his neck, I think I'm going to stay on his neck right where I'm at for another five, 10, 30 seconds. And Nine I think and minutes total. I yeah. think it became ego an, an an ego trip. And he just stayed on, on that guy's neck because people were telling him not to, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm a cop. I tell you what to do. Exactly and it became right. personal and ego driven. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to go to prison for and justifiably. So I think and justified, uh, eh, maybe not that long, well, but probably, we'll probably at least 10 years. Do you think there'll be an appeal? Mm, is there a mandatory appeal? Yeah, I think it's going to be an automatic appeal, I might guess. But it doesn't matter. There will be an appeal. Yeah, I, I can't. And imagine. he will not be sentenced until June, right? I believe that is correct. Yeah. But but you generally agree that the people yelling at him to get off his neck made him stay longer on his neck? I would agree with that. Yes. So what does that say about... He's an animal. I mean, he was just... Well, you... when... Police, I don't want to be too broad with it because there's plenty, plenty of great, good police officers. Sure. There's also a lot of bad ones. Absolutely. And I think the ego, the ego of I'm upholding the law. I am the law. There's that mentality that I don't know. I think it's going to have to. And I was talking to this attorney about it in that I saw I was watching a TV show that it, it was shot in Britain. And a guy had a, a a hostage in the middle of a field. Mm-hmm. And all the police officers that went after this guy, nobody had a gun. And I looked into it and it's like maybe 10 or 15% of police officers in Great Britain. And I, I could be totally wrong with this. 10, but some small percentage of police officers actually carry a gun. You want a gun on scene? Then you dispatch the SWAT team. They have guns. And in that situation, yes, they did, because a guy had a gun and he had a hostage. But by and large, police officers, bobbies or whatever they call them in, in, <laughs> in England, they don't carry guns. Not every cop carries a gun there. Right. Should we take something? What do the, and it seems like all the Nordic countries, Sweden and Denmark and all these countries have, have their shit together when it comes to health care and education and policing. Mm-hmm. Do, do all cops in, in Sweden, in Norway, do they all carry guns? I bet they don't. No. I bet they carry think? like Viking hatchets. <laughs> fucking whack people over the head with them. Like just cut their heads off. Okay. All right. Like in Viking, like uh, um, what's the... Thor. You go, Thor. Valhalla. When you go to Valhalla, I'm going to Valhalla to sit at the table of the Vikings and eat in Valhalla. Yeah. Was I being I, too serious? And, and you thought you had had to come in with some comedic relief? <laughs> That's comedic relief. Oh, man, we're in fucking trouble. <laughs> uh, let's jump over last subject. Um, oh, so you don't have any take on what I just said. What do you want me to say? Do, well, what do you do? You, you traveled the world more than me. Do, yeah, do countries think- like all these countries up up in the north, they got their shit together. I think health care is taken care sense. of. Education is taken care of. Isn't it? Okay. Can I be extremely, except for England, the Nordic countries, it's a bad example because, um, and I have to be careful because I don't want to offend anybody. Well, let's just agree that you're going to offend somebody. So just say. But most of those Nordic countries are not melting pots. There are not mm, huge okay. uh, amounts of different nationalities, different skin colors, different cultures. It's, Basically, you know, your blonde hair, blue eyed Nordic individuals. I don't know if that is. Also, I would agree with you on this. I'll try to be quick. Is that like a business, a small mom and pop business, a a certain business model works for that. It's not going to work on a giant corporation, right? Right. Same thing for America is a big country that is a melting pot, not a little tiny country with mostly, you know, indigenous people and still very young our country i still think we have a mentality of the wild wild west i think that it is inbred in our dna that it's our right to carry weapons it's our right to have a gun it's inbred in us in the last 200 and some odd years i mean it's just it is 
it's part of our culture, culture, at least at this point. Now, 500 years from now, if we're still around as, as a country, I bet it's going to be completely different than it is now. It's going to be completely different 50 years from now, hopefully. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at England, you look at the Nordic country, they're, they're how many? I mean, they're thousands of years older than us, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I think they've had time to evolve. <laughs> we're, we're still evolving. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I, I think it's going to take a long time for us to get rid of that mentality, that Wild West mentality. I could be wrong. Well said. It's just my, my stupid ass editorial. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Aw, that's um, adorable. Okay. Did I address that okay? Last one is the border. I want to talk about the border. I want to talk about... You want to talk about the border? The border between um, the United States of America and Mexico. Okay. And the mess that has been created down there. And our wonderful, talented, extremely capable vice president, Kamala Harris has now come out and blamed the previous administration for the chaotic mess that is currently happening on the border with children, primarily children. What? And that is unreasonable because what? Well, I think it's unreasonable because it's easy to always armchair quarterback. It's easy to, sure. blame, you know, yeah, the, agree. the last guy, right? Mm -hmm. of, blame it on the last guy. Instead of looking at the situation, looking at the issue and saying- That was a pretty hot issue though, throughout oh, yeah. that- no, no doubt about it. Sure. They haven't fixed it. And and the the um the buffoon from California, um, Becerra, who's now head of Department of Health and Human Services, who is a big part of this issue, has basically buried his head in the sand and not come out with a plan with 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 anything really to address part of that problem. I mean, there's other agencies, but he's definitely been exactly what he did here in California as attorney general. He's That's a senator now. No, he's head of, he's the, he is the secretary of health and human services. He was the attorney general of Cali. And you think he should be dealing with the issue down? In, oh yeah. Yeah. The border? No, yeah. No, Biden asked him specifically for a plan to help deal with the situation down there. From a health and human services standpoint. Yes. Yeah. The, you know, and he's, it, and what has he done? Is, he's left the country. No, he's, he's a boob. He's an absolute boob. I mean, he was a boob here. He's a boob there. And I think... What's his name? Uh, Becerra. Are you paying Becerra. attention? Yeah. And I think the administration, including Vice President Kamala Harris, I think they're starting to figure out that he's a boob. And it hasn't taken him that long. I mean, he's only been in a month or so, but he's not dealing with the situation. Could he be one of the first heads of the cabinet or is he? Is that part of the president's cabinet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could he be one of the first people to be replaced? <laughs> if I was a betting man, that would be my bet. Yes. So he's on his way out. Before, That's he's, good, even, before he's even unpacked his boxes. Well, when you're in this, in, in a, especially that situation, working at the top, you better have your shit together and have a vision and be able to execute it, right? Absolutely. That kind of what, yeah, you better he, be. If he doesn't, anyone. it's like you said, if you don't, it's going to become obvious pretty fast, really fast. It's game on. I mean, you're, you're in the big leagues and you, you got issues like this, the border problem, and you can always blame it on the previous guy. I mean, uh, you can do that for a while. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that for a while. Um, I, I know during um, president Obama's administration, they loved Remember, They used to talk about uh, George Bush. Well, the Bush, I mean, they, it's like the first two years, it was always the Bush administration, right? Until they got, until they got up and running. It took them, mm -hmm. it took them a year, at least two, because they inherited the problem. Remember the whole meltdown, 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. was, that was. That's valid inherited. for a while. Right. It worked for a while. But I mean, most people who have a, an ounce of intelligence are like, yeah, well, okay. How long can you do that? How long can you blame the, the last guy? until you get your crap together and deal with the problem. And everybody throws money at it. They threw money at it then. They're throwing money at the COVID now. I mean, just, and it just, oh, I can't. we talked about it last time. I don't, I don't even want to go into the amount of money that's just being thrown around. It's, it's insane. All right. I, I lied. I said that was the last thing. I got one more. Go ahead. I want you to, I want you to look this up. This was really interesting. I discovered what? Why? You, you have a tendency to treat me like your secretary. I want you to look this up. 
didn't you? Well, you are kind of cute. I touched inappropriately. Oh, wait, that's sexy. All right, what's your f***ing... I can't say that. Um, have you heard of Memo, M-E-M-M-O? This Go is, ahead. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's where, mm, I guess you could say there are some A celebrities on there. Most of them are B celebrities. Oh, it's an application? Yeah, it's it's where, okay, oh man, you're you're having a birthday, right? And you love Tom Arnold. Oh, yes, okay. I've heard of this. Okay, and I could go on and, and send a little description. The old man is turning 60 and blah, blah, blah. And he's been my best friend since high school and blah, blah, blah. And Tom Arnold gets on there and says, hey, old man, I heard you're turning 60. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that your friend, the senator, is sending you mm -hmm. this. He says to you know, go blow yourself and you pay like 200 bucks, right? <laughs> Would and, you please do that for me? <laughs> Have Tom, Tom Arnold send me a message. I mean, I'm, I'm at the site right now. The okay. actors, go yeah. ahead, go ahead, please. So I just found that, ex okay, first of all, I don't think it's going to last very long because people are going to get tired of it really quick, right? I went through it this morning. I have, I have to be brutally honest with you. I'm not, even though I, I have been in the past, but I've been lacking a little bit. Who Who's hot celebrities, music? I'm know, looking at these stuff. celebrities and I'm like, Jesus, no thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody there? Yes, I see one, Dick Butkus. Oh, I didn't see Dick, Dick Butkus. You know how much he costs if you want him to do a message for you? How much? How much? $450. Okay, well. That's, that's pretty high. Tom Arnold is 110 Big Ed. Who the fuck is Big Ed? Never and why should him. I give a shit about him? Jesus. I mean, okay. anybody to make a buck. Danny White, former uh, Dallas Cowboy. Maybe we should all chip in and spend 150 bucks and send the a guy, message. To oh, man. The guy I want, and he's on there. Look for him. Burton Lyle Gillum. You know who Burton Ooh. Lyle Gillum is? No. Well, you goddamn guys are dancing around by a bunch of Kansas City faggots. <laughs> oh. That's the guy I want to wish me a happy birthday. Is that guy still alive? <laughs> he is still alive. <laughs> that guy is freaking hilarious. Camp Town's going to sing a song. Do da, a do da. <laughs> oh my God. There's all kinds of people. LeVar Ball, $133. Yeah. Pete yeah. Rose, 150 bucks. Pete Rose. No, I, you know what? I saw Pete, Ro Pete Rose. I'd get a happy birthday from Pete Rose. I, I would want yeah, him to say, like, I bet it's your birthday, but I don't bet anymore. That's what I'd want him to say. Did you say that? <laughs> Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams. Remember that pot smoker? Oh, God. Rick, Ricky Ricky Williams. Williams. Didn't, he, didn't he go to Notre Dame? I don't know. I Former think... football player. He was with the Dolphins. He was with a bunch of teams before he ended up with the Dolphins. But the Niners, he was the Niners, why? Oh my God, there's a guy I know personally on here. Oh God, no. He's $40. $40. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Tori, Tori Spelling, $1,500. Yeah, no. Tori thank Spelling. You. No, thank you. What? That does not look like Tori Spelling anymore. No, thank you. What happened to her lips? Louise Guzman, $1,700. Who's? I'm sorry. Louise, Louise Guzman. Guzman? You know who I did see on there is a um, um, uh, Star Wars guy, uh, Billy D. Williams. I think he's Billy. A, yeah, Billy D. Williams is on here. Yeah, he's a cool cat. I, I dig him. Yeah, we'll always, always remember Billy D. Williams from. Um, I'm old. <laughs> no, I can't think of the name of the movie when he played Gail Sayers. Brian Song. Oh, oh, Brian Song. Brian Song. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, great movie. Great. great. We'll make you cry every time. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Right up there with you me. and I should watch it together and cry naked <laughs> on X. <laughs> Don uh, Deep Trump. There's one that says Deep Trump. Ben Price, Donald Trump impersonator, so, so hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> click on. Are you on the on the actors still? I'm on the homepage. The top it says Larry Thomas, aka the Soup Nazi. Okay, right next to Joseph. Joseph. Uh, Ganascali. Ganascali. Click that one on and listen to what he says. Just click it on and turn it up. It's it's freaking gold. You got to listen to it. It's so good. Hey, how you doing, everyone? It's Joe Ganascoli, Vito from The Sopranos. How the f are you? Listen, I want to do a video for you. I can do it for your birthday, for anniversary, for a friend, just as a gift. 
um, congratulations, whatever the fuck you want. And I guarantee you, it'll be the best gift that you can give someone. So, let me, Joey G, Vito from The Sopranos, make a special video for someone special to you. I promise it'll be unique. It'll be different. It'll be the best fucking gift they ever had. All right? Take it easy. Joey G from The Sopranos. And if you want me to keep it clean, I don't have to curse. But it's a little fucking hard. Just saying. Well, man, that's freaking gold right there, dude. Freaking <laughs> gold. All right. Joey G, yeah? Yeah, huh? Hey, I don't All right. You know? I don't know. <laughs> it's gold. Oh, it's gold. So... I went down the rabbit hole on this this morning when I was reading one of the papers that I read every morning. So, of course, I Googled it, and I couldn't stop. I was clicking on videos and listening to people, and I was like, oh, my God, this is this is hilarious. I mean, mm -hmm. some of these people are like, why would you do this? Why would you do this? Hard up for money? I mean. Trying to be relevant? Trying to I get guess back? I it's into easy money, right? It's super easy money. I mean, if. You're making 200 bucks. He goes, hey, hi, happy birthday, old man. How you doing? Love you. Okay. The senator says, you know, hello. You get 200 bucks. You got to prepay it first, right? Even before they do it, you prepay it. And some of these people, this, how about Tay Zonday? He's a YouTube star, artist and actor. Sings, oh, the guy who sang Chocolate Rain. <laughs> I don't even know. Tay Zonday. Chocolate Rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate Rain. You don't know the you don't know about chocolate rain? <laughs> no, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know any. Uh, I don't know any of these. You don't know chocolate. <laughs> what? It'll be playing in the background right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, and, and I'm scrolling through this, and I, I think out of every row that I'm looking at, I I don't know anybody. And then you know, soup knots, uh, of course. Ernie, another Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. Yeah. Now, the guy that I was kind of intrigued that did it was, and he's been around. He was in um, Blatoon um, and uh, Scrubs. Uh, John McGinley. Is that how you pronounce the last name? John McGinley? I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you do. John McGinley. I don't see him here. Uh, go to the top. He, he, he was in Scrubs. He was the doctor in Scrubs, and he played the scene. Oh yeah, yeah. He was in Platoon. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Good actor. Good yeah, actor, he, man. Yeah, I, I was surprised not... to see him on the list. To be honest with you. What? Yeah, where is he? Yeah, he was the one. Your favorite scene? Guys ju j jumping around on one leg. No. Oh, was that? <laughs> That's your favorite scene, not my favorite scene. <laughs> uh. I don't see it. Oh, John McGinley. Yeah. Yeah. But he's $400. Yeah. So 400. So you're going to make a quick 400 bucks for a what? 20 second, you know, spot. I mean, all you do is get on there and record it. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant in a way. It's brilliant to make. I mean, so what he does, 10 of them a month, that's an extra 4k a month. I mean, why yeah. not? Right. I see another guy on here. I knew. And, and I, and this is a, that's like Chris Kattan. Do you know who Chris Kattan is? I do know who Chris Kattan is. $80. And th that just shows you, like, there's people that have made it to Saturday Night Live. Not everybody... Yeah. They, not everybody gets to be Will Ferrell. I believe you introduced me to Chris Kattan at the um, Henry... No Theater. way. Yeah. No. Yeah. I doubt it. I'm serious. You did. That guy was... He was a big hit. He was like the star of SNL for a while. Well, so was John Lovitz, and I took a leak next to him. I saw his wiener. Yeah, that's a ticket. You're just name dropping now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the, it's time to end the show when the senator stops name dropping. <laughs> okay. But I want you, I want to talk about this again. I'm serious. This is so interesting. This is a great thing to talk because it's it's banal. It's like anybody could laugh at it. It's not yeah. in the Supreme Court or racism or sexism. Yeah. I mean, it, I just wish I knew. Uh, 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 like 25% of these people. I don't even know 25 Why? Why would you want to know any of those because people? I feel so out of it that I look at all these people and I'm like, who's that? Who's that? You know, and they give a little. Oh, you feel like you're out of touch. Way out of touch. Where? I mean, who? You feel a need 
Do you think it's important to be in touch with who I mean, uh, Stephen Michael Cazeta is? Okay, who's Bill Jones, Anchor, Anchorman, uh, Rod Remington in Glee? He's Rod from- Remington Glee. sounds like a porn star. Yeah, I mean Rod Remington. <laughs> Where's Rod Remington? Who's Who's Brooke Lewis Bellas? She's an actress and producer. Okay, I don't I? Do you suffer from FOMO? No, no, I used to, but your, I, your daughter oh, says you do. No, when COVID started, boom, that was the end of that. I'm so glad I miss out on everything now. I'm well, then why do you care about who these people are? Riff Rap, the rapper, <laughs> uh, Dorinda Medley, TV personality, the real housewives of New York City. I don't care. <laughs> Harley Morenstein, because comedian, host of Epic Meal Time. Because you- there's a show called Epic Meal Time. Who fucking cares? God damn it. About as many people as care about this podcast. That's how many. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I switched over to the sports. I got, no, you're right. I, I don't care about that. I mean, but I see Dick Buckus. You're right. I see Ron Jaworski. <laughs> how about Rocky? Poor, poor Ron Jaworski, man. He he said on the air once. I know. So ridiculous. It's like, come on. There are so many worse things than that. I know. People are so stupid. So, what about Rocky Blair? I'd, I'd hear from Black Rocky Blair. It's Rocky Blyer. Rocky Blair? Rocky Blyer. <laughs> it's pronounced Rocky Blyer. He was the fullback when... when um, the Pittsburgh Steelers! Rocky Blyer was the fullback behind... Mm, who's the, the catch? I'm old and stupid. Not the catch. Um, the but catch. That's Dwight Clark. That's Dwight Clark. No. Who Why was they the, call it the Who was the great running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, Drum Bennis, <laughs> the bus. But no, I mean back in the seventies <laughs> when when. <laughs> oh Christ! Oh, the letter O is coming to mind. Oh my God, the steel curtain. The the great was it Terry Bradshaw? <laughs> Terry, that was part of the backfield. It was Terry Bradshaw, Rocky Blyer, and oh, Franco Harris. Jesus Christ! Oh, why do you say Franco? I'm Franco. No, you don't. Okay. Oh, Jesus. God, that was a lot of effort. Anyway, I find this whole thing, this memo thing, extremely fascinating. Yeah, that people would pay money for this. Right, you think they're going to add? Because you can can suggest people. I'm going to suggest Lou Holtz. I want Lou Holtz to wish me happy birthday. I can do that. Hey, this is Lou Holtz. Hey, thanks for doing a great job. Just get out there. Get up early. Go do some push-ups and have a great day. Happy birthday there, Senator. Just get out there, mix it up, do some push-ups, have a great day. Go Irish! Go Irish. Jesus Christ. While we're on the subject of sports, uh, running back Ricky Williams, who we mentioned earlier, went to the University of Texas and then played three years for the New Orleans Saints, eight years for the Miami Dolphins, and his final season in 2011 for the Baltimore Ravens. He also played one year in the Canadian Football League and four years in the Philadelphia Phillies minor league system. Didn't know that. So there's more information about Ricky Williams than you probably wanted. Chocolate Rain is a song recorded, put on YouTube, and went viral back in 2007. This kid was a professor's assistant at the University of Minnesota, and he quote-unquote blew up, as the kids say. The dang video currently has 130 million views. How about that? Almost as many as... This podcast. And the theme song, by the way, uh, from the movie Brian's Song that you heard a snippet of was composed by Henry Mancini. I did not know that. You can always come here for your daily dose of trivia. Covered a lot of ground on this episode. I wouldn't necessarily say fertile ground, but it was covered nonetheless. Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time on The Modern Moron. Thanks for listening.
I get no kick from champagne Mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all So tell me why should it be true That I get a belt out of you Some get a kick from cocaine Hold it, hold it, what the hell is that shit? I meant a song, a real song Something like Swing Low Sweet chariot. Swing low, chariot, brother. Don't know that one, huh? Well, how about the Camp Town Lady? The Camp Town Ladies. The Camp Town Ladies. Oh, you know. The Camp Town Lady sing this song, doo-dah, doo-dah. The Camp Town Racetrack five miles long, all the doo-dah day. Why run all night, run all day. Let me find money on the bottom of the hill bank, some money's on the bay. the wide, wide world of sports is going on here. How would you people try to get a little track lead? Not to jump around like a bunch of Kansas City f***ers.